Hey, it's me. I am back. I took a week off to lay in my bed and feel sorry for myself. Back. All core intentions have their ups and down moments. I was going to do this every day, but anyway, hug your knees into your body. I'm back. I'm going to put a sound um, for when I switch poses in case you don't feel like listening to me nattering on. You can just listen to the sound. We're hugging our knees into our body. Looking for edges in this pose and trying to find, I don't know, different level of physical peace. Put your feet on the ground and lift up your hips coming into bridge pose. This sequence is going to be a stretch mostly for your lower body. You can take your arms behind you in bridge if you want to and or come up and down onto your toes if you want to. We're going to bring in the side body and the middle body a little bit, but it's mostly this is mostly a lower body stretch. Take your hips down. We're going to move this into a happy baby. I have um, taught a lot of yoga classes, but I don't really have any, I don't really have any illusions about teaching anybody anything in yoga and especially in, and really in all things. You're your own teacher. We're just hanging out, practicing together. You're figuring out your breath and your body. All right, come on up. Put your right foot into your left thigh. Gonna come down over that left leg in Janus Sasana, just kind of starting to wiggle into the hip and the hamstring and the low back to the extent that that's comfortable. You can lean on anything you want here. I'm sort of leaning on my hand, and then I'm grabbing my foot and whatever. Doesn't matter. If you felt like putting like a cushion or something underneath you and leaning on that, that's fine. What we're trying to not do in all of these poses is feel strain in the joints. And that's why yoga teachers are always talking about alignment because if you can put your bones in the right order, then, um, then, it'll, then it'll stretch your muscles without asking your joints to do the stretch. If you're feeling strain in your joints, it's possible that you've got your bones misaligned and or that you're pushing too hard. All right, come on down, and then we're gonna pick up the right, that, I mean, sorry, that left foot, come in into heron pose, crunch asana. If you can't do this, no big deal. You know, you could put a strap around your foot. It's the same pose. We're just changing the angle a little bit because we want to. Stretching into the low back and the back of the hamstring just like we were before. You can grab anywhere on this leg that makes sense. Okay, leg comes down, put your right foot on the outside of that left thigh, and then come around and hug your knee into your abdomen, finding this long twist, roll your shoulder blades back and down the back. I recorded this voiceover and I had said all these super wise things about prana and chi and stuff, and then it didn't save. And so it makes me feel like maybe I was not meant to give you a big speech about prana and chi. Which are the same thing, by the way. You feel your yoga however you want. Alright, so here's a pose I made up. You're coming forward and you're bending that, uh, what is that? Your left knee. Your left knee is kind of pointing towards your right foot. And you're leaning down over it. It is a half shoelace.
We're going to do full leaf shoelace in a second, but just uh, organize your body into this and see if it makes sense to you. Stack your knees on top of each other. This is shoelace. And uh, come on down. I have a feeling that the ancient yogis weren't the ones who gave it that name, shoelace. They probably didn't name Wild Thing or Rockstar either. But I bet they were the ones who thought of cow face, which is. Well, this, this pose that you're doing now is half of cow face. It's the bottom half of the cow's face. You can grab your hands behind you and roll your heart open if you want. All right, come on up. And we're still, we still have that right leg bent. This time we're putting the right foot on the left knee and bending the left foot coming into this like figure four, but you're seated and you're leaning back on your arms, rolling your shoulder blades back and down the back. It's some, um, it's kind of a weird halfway in between kind of pose. Let's see if this has meaning to you. It's supposed to be at a hard opener and a hip opener, but really passive on both counts. Yeah, this basic shape in your legs is the shape that we're going to keep for the next like million poses. So find a nice angle. All right, and then if you want to pick up your hips, we're coming into this upward table with the legs in the same shape. You could also come into an upward table with your legs both down or not come into the upward table. This is the one time in this practice where we're going to work. When we do this and when we do it on the other side, the rest of us is the rest of this post practice is just us flopping around. If it feels bad, like as in bad, it probably means you are leaning weird on one of your joints. Try to rearrange your pose and make it better. Definitely don't want to hurt yourself. Okay, take your hips down. Keep that shape in your legs. And we're going to do figure four. Threading your hands through. Or if you want to make that pose deeper, you can wrap your arms around the outsides of both of your legs. Or if you want to make it shallower, which is sometimes what athletes need, you can just grab onto your pants or something. You don't have to, you don't have to um, thread your hands through or whatever. Okay, and then um, put, uh, how do I describe this? Put your left foot on the ground, keep that shape in your legs and let the whole shape go to your left until your right foot is standing, your right knee points towards the ceiling. We're in a twist, we're twisting across the abdomen. This, this is the third time now that I've recorded the entire audio for this thing. I keep having technical difficulties. It makes you kind of wonder why, like why? This whole, this whole COVID thing has sort of taken rationality out of the equation on many levels for everything. Gotta stop asking why. Just be like, okay, I guess I'll do it again. All right, come up and then straighten your left leg and put your, we're keeping the same figure four shape, right? We got our right foot still on the left thigh and we're coming forward this time with the leg straight. We're basically doing a figure four on the ground like the literal four, where your legs look like a four. Um, we did this before in Janusur Sasana, we just have the foot on the thigh now. It changes the pose quite a bit. It opens up that hamstring in a, in a more uh, emphatic way. Doesn't matter about toe touching here or ever, you don't ever have to touch your toes. And you can always use a strap if you want to, or you can just come down part of the way if you want to, it doesn't matter. All right, 
And then I'm widening out the stance between my legs. I took my right leg and pulled it over about two inches to the right, three inches to the right. And then I'm taking my left elbow to the inside of my left knee. Right arm goes up. Parvati Dajanasrasana, this is a side bend. And really, it is such a side bend. Even though it's that same uh, hip opener that we've been doing for quite a while, the, the legs in this position are much more of a stabilizer than anything else. They are just keeping you from falling over while you do this giant, ginormous side bend. Find that. You're putting that, oh, you're going to come up onto your uh, uh, right knee. Yeah, coming onto your right knee and then leaning again to the left. This is the same side bend, except we change the shape in that bottom knee. It's parvita, no, this one's um, parigasana, the gate pose. It's a nice side bend, really, really nice side bend. Okay, and then fold it up, putting that foot, whatever, right foot into your left thigh. Come down to part of your Jajanasrasana, and then inhale up to a uh, kickstand. Exhale down, part of your Jajanasrasana. Inhale up, kickstand. Exhale down into your forward bend. Inhale up. Kickstand, we're just doing this back and forth for a bit. Exhale down. Over bend. Inhale up. Kickstand. Woo. Exhale down. And then we're going to come into a fire log. That's your foot is on your knee and your knee is on your foot. It's also called a double pigeon. Called a double pigeon because it is a double pigeon. Doing two pigeons at once. It is a big hip opener. Foot on knee, knee on foot. If it doesn't work for you, come to cross legged. That's basically the same pose except much easier. You can come forward if you want to. Okay, swish out your knees back and forth. Come to the other side, right leg goes out, left foot comes into the right thigh, come down, Janushasana. Guess I'm really glad to be able to see this time. It's this time when everything's weird and all bets are off. And the little question why doesn't have any answers at all. I guess it's, uh, Good for the brain. All right. And then straighten that leg. That's your right leg. You notice we're on the other side now, right? Going to do that whole sequence on the other side. Come into Kronjasana. Kronjasana. The hair in pose. Wherever you want to grab on that leg is fine. All right, and then put your left foot on the outside of that right thigh and then hug your knee into your abdomen, coming into this beautiful twist. It is beautiful. Roll your shoulder blades back and down the back. If I was there able to adjust myself, I would fix my shoulders because I'm not really doing that heart opener there. You do the heart opener. Roll your shoulder blades back and down the back at the same time as you're finding that twist.
Okay, come forward and, and then here's this made up pose. You're pointing your knee, your left knee towards your right foot. Come down over, it's half shoelace. And if you're like, what? Then just, you know, wiggle into it until you find something that feels good on your muscles and not bad on your joints. In all forward bends, you're looking for the release of the backs of your legs and also your low back. Of course, your hips. I wasn't a fan of our old system anyway, I'll tell you the truth. Okay, bend that other, the leg that's straight, bend it underneath you. And you got your knees stacked on your knees, you're coming forward into shoelace. Like that whole corporate thing was quite off the rails, as we all know. But it feels in many ways right now like we are in one of those Bugs Bunny Roadrunner cartoons, you know, where the Roadrunner goes off the cliff and it just like is dangling in the air. Before you remember to look down, this is the dangling part. You can roll your shoulder blades back and down the back if you want to open your heart at the same time as you're coming forward. It doesn't mean we're going to fall. It just means that everything is so unclear. All right. Okay, let's do this thing where we, um, we're moving in figure four. Like this is figure four we're gonna do in a bunch of different forms. First, we are doing our figure four with our butt on the ground and our hands behind us with our fingers pointing towards our hips, rolling our shoulder blades back and down the back, which I was not doing there, please do that. And opening the heart at the same time we're opening the hips. I got my hair cut and it, I, I cut my hair myself. Actually, my daughter did it. And it, from this angle, looks like my head is on backwards. It's pretty funny. All right, pick up your hips. If you want to. And this is the hard thing, the one hard thing in this sequence. And you're like, oh, I'm gonna do the hard thing. I'm gonna do the hard thing because I'm an American. I'm an American woman. Unless you're not a woman. I'm going to do the hard thing. But, you know, maybe not. Maybe, like, spend a week in bed like I did. I didn't really spend a week in bed. I was up and down doing a variety of things. But I was, like, letting go of a lot of the promises that I made to myself. About my quarantine. It's just what I needed to do. Okay, hips come down. And this, on this side, we're going to do the twist first. Okay, you've got your left foot on your right knee and you're letting them go out to the right until your left foot is standing and your left knee points towards the ceiling, breathing into your abdomen. Good, and then come up and find figure four. Breathe down into your hip. Okay, and then come up and keep that shape, you know, keep your figure four, but we're straightening that bottom leg. We've got our left foot on our right thigh, leaning down over it. Figuring, figuring it out, figuring it out. Not based on what I look like, not based on what I say, but based on what your body feels. Now 
I mean, I guess the big lesson about COVID-19 is that anything we thought we were in control of, we were completely not in control of. That's, that's it. Like, we're letting go, we're over the cliff. We haven't fallen, maybe we're not going to fall. But we're definitely not on the ground anymore. All right, take that leg a little further to the left. You can't see what I'm doing here because I'm facing away from you. But I took my leg and I inched it to the left a little bit. And then I'm taking my right elbow to the inside of the right knee. Left arm comes up, Parvita Jodhishar Sasana. on up. Nope. Forget I said that. Stay down. Now come up. And then put that knee, or left knee, right knee, same knee, on the ground and come up into um, Parigasana gate pose and facing the other way. I'm trying to figure out. That's your left knee. Your left knee is on the ground. You're leaning to the right, I'm pretty sure. so good side bending is just epic all right hands come down fold it back up put your uh, left uh, whatever foot the left foot inside the right thigh exhale down and then inhale up into this beautiful thing kickstand Exhale down, Parvita Janusar Sasana. Inhale up, kickstand. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Okay. I'm turning around. You don't have to turn around. We're coming into the fire log, the double pigeon on the other side. Foot on a knee, knee on a foot. Come on forward. This is the last thing in this sequence. And then after this, we're going to do a um, longish forward bend. And then we're going to do Shavasana. Grab your hands behind you and roll your shoulder blades back and down the back. Open your heart. While we're still here in the throes of our practice, I want to encourage you to actually do your Shavasana. It's good for you. Because. I'm going to tell you why. I'll tell you exactly why. Like, never minding the physical aspects of the Shavasana, which is basically the, the essence of the healing that we do in this practice. Take your, come up, take your legs apart, and come to Ubavista Konasana. The reason why you should do Shavasana is because you deserve Shavasana. That's it. That's it. What other, whatever the other thing that you're like trying to leap up and do. And I am just speaking from my own wanting to leap up and do things. It's not as important as Shavasana. Which is where you really let your brain go to a different place. Right now we're not in Shavasana. I'm just talking it up. Right now we're in Upavista Konasana. the wide-legged forward bend. You're expressing it however makes sense to you.
Lately I am startled by my own need for self-care, which just needs, it seems to be just bottomless. Like I cannot get enough. I cannot do enough like yoga or walking in the woods or all the other meditation. I cannot get enough. And I, there are two ways of looking at that. One is that I am very weak, like very weak, and need to build myself up. That's probably true. Or the other is that I deserve it. I deserve it. That's also probably true. Whatever your justification is for your self-care, you got to do it. Because falling apart is not going to help anybody. This is a long one. Continue to breathe here and open the canals now. Come up. Wiggle around or do whatever you want to do before Shavasana. And then lay your body down. Not because you have to and not because you need to, but because you deserve it. Shavasana is nice. This one's a long one. It's going to be five minutes. See if you can do the whole thing. I bet you can.
Okay, wiggle your body parts of various kinds and stretch your body. And then roll onto your side. This is the life we're living, it's pretty good. Come up to seated. Take your hands onto your forehead and breathe into your sinuses. Take your hands to your heart. Hey, who loves you? Me, I do. I dedicate my practice to you. Thanks for practicing with me. Namaste.